Um, and how are you viewing this today? I would love to go ahead and type that in the chat. And I'm going to share my screen with you as you're doing that. Mm -mm. What's going on? I'm gonna stop sharing that then. Share a yep, let's share. Let's share a window instead. It's not letting me choose my window. Hold on. Great. All right. We're back on track. Can everybody hear me again? Okay, I want to just briefly introduce myself. My name is Darcy Qual. I am our district assessment coordinator and our district technology integrationist here at Mora Public Schools. Um, this is my 23rd, I think, year in education. I started in first and second grade um, for many, many years, and I moved up to a, a K-6 technology lab um, for a few years, and now I'm up to the district, um, like I said, doing our assessment coordinating and our technology integrationist. So um, that is me in a, a quick nutshell, just because I know we need to get started. Um, for today, I do need to give credit to Malacca, Jeremy Mikola, because he was my motivation for putting this together. Um, we started maybe even a couple years ago. He had presented to his staff on a few assistive technology pieces, um, and we kind of worked together a little bit on it. And since, we've kind of gone back and forth and just um, collaborated. So he was my, my inspiration for bringing this back to our district, and I've shared it with... Um, some of our special ed staff, but as well as some of our classroom teachers from fourth grade on up all the way up to 12th grade, even a few of my teachers have been interested. Now, if you do not know how to um, add an extension, we're going to cover that. If you don't know how to delete an extension, we'll cover that. And then, like I said, we're going to go through the extensions that I've chosen today. And I kind of put them in separate folders, as you can see, with topics. So like the very first one right here is is a couple tools on just focusing, okay? I wanna start on this first slide though because right there is my email, dqual at morrisschools.org. If you have questions after this session, please feel free to reach out and email me um, and I'd be happy to share anything that I can with it, okay? One thing that I should start with um, about extensions is if you add an extension and then all of a sudden your computer is acting a little wonky, like, okay, it's going really slow. Um, every once in a while you, you come across an extension that just doesn't work with your computer. So be aware that if I give you 20 extensions to add today um, and you add all 20 of them, you might find one that just doesn't jive. And so you'll want to go back and forth and just be aware that, oh, maybe that was the extension that I recently added. Um, so before you bring that cause or concern to your, your tech team, you may, you may know already that, oh, maybe that extension wasn't the right thing to do. All right, so let's take a look at this. We are a Google Apps for Education school. I'm gonna show you right now in my upper left-hand corner of my, um, bar here, a little apps dot 
with a bunch of rainbow dots. Okay, if I click on that, it's gonna bring me to my web store. And now if I click on extensions, if I know the name of my extension, I can type that in and search it, and then I can add it that way. For today though, I have put the link directly to all of it. So if you click on the link, it'll bring you to this store. It already have it in there and you just add it, okay? I also am gonna just be adding everything today um, as we go through it. Did I lose it again? Sorry. Sorry, I lost the screen again, didn't I? You back yet? Let's do it again. We're getting there. All right. Good thing you have the link to everything. Okay. I'm going to go right away. Um, I'm going to jump into the focus one. This very first one, you will notice that... Um, during this presentation, if you go through it on the slides, I tried to just give a tiny brief um, description of everything. And then sometimes I would put a little asterisk in there just to let you know um, if there's been a, a little tip that I've seen or that a teacher has told me. So for this one right away, you'll get a little biography of it. It just says, students who need a break, this extension can be set to periodically have them stop working, do something physical for a moment, okay? Then you'll also see at the bottom, I wrote, I took this one off my computer because um, it was driving me nuts because you would set it and I forgot about it and then all of a sudden this timer would be on, on my screen and it was bugging me. Um, so take it with a grain of salt, um, test it out and see if this is what would work well for you. Like I said, I was in the middle of a document and then all of a sudden I get this move it thing. I love the concept but maybe I just wanted to finish my task first. So kind of know your students on what you're, what you're putting this out for. Now go ahead, um, if you want, I have the link right here. So when you click on it, it's gonna bring you back to that, that app store, the web store. If you've never added an extension right now, I've already searched it for you. So right here on the right hand side, add to Chrome. I'm going to do that right now. It's going to prompt me um, above, and you can't really see it right now because my screen is um, not viewing it. It'll ask you, do I really want to add this? And I want to add my extension versus cancel it. So I'm going to add it. You may not be able to see that window. All right. Now I get a notification that um, it's been added. And I'm gonna go to this right-hand corner here. You see where my, my search bar is up here. I have a couple extensions up here, not many yet. I'm just gonna go to this little extension here, click on it. And this shows what um, extensions that I have running currently. And if you can't see it, um, I'll be able to show it to you on our video here. I'm gonna just pin it, there we go. Now you should be able to see this little icon up here. So your extensions are gonna be stored up here. If I click on it, my Move It has a couple choices. I can set this for every 55 minutes it goes off or however long I want. I'm just gonna put it for five minutes. It's checked that it's enabled. And I'm going to actually just leave that app for now. Okay. And I'll show you what happens to that as we're, we're going through our other extensions. 
so my next one is um, Google Keep. Okay, Google Keep, there is an extension for it. This is one giant um, like pack of sticky notes. I really, really enjoy this. This will help you. It can help students as well with organization um, and stay in focus on, on tasks. Um, our school district, we do have, we have it on the side over here as an icon. Um, you can add it as an extension. Um, you can also, um, like we're Google Apps for Education, so it can be like in those little nine dots where you, you go in your upper right-hand corner. I'm just going to show you on the side here what ours looks like. You can add tasks over here, which is nice. I could have, um, I could do checklist. I could do whatever to-do lists I have. You can see I have a few. But just to take a note, it's very self-explanatory. Tuesday jobs. Right? And then I can add things as well if I want, um, like check boxes, things like that. If I expand this, it gives me um, a lot of other choices to it. I'm not going to take the time to look at the um, all the fun little colors, but the color wheel is there. Um, like I said, you can add check boxes. It's super handy. You can set timers, though, so that it, it pops up for you, which would be very handy um, for students that need to stay focused on something. So I'll click done on this. Um, and I would really encourage you, if not for your students, for you as well to use this one. Like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be an, an extension. You might have it actually in your, your apps already. Okay. I'm going to move on to another one because I know we're, we're going fast today just to try and get everything in. Um, Crafty Cursor. This one, um, it is what it is. It's, it's going to be a giant cursor which is kind of nice for some students. They may need this. Um, you'll notice the little asterisk down here. It said, I had to refresh my screen the first time I installed it. So sometimes um, as you're going through these things, I tried to put little, those little tips for you because I don't want you to panic that, oh, it's not working on my computer. It might just be something simple that you have to refresh. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add it to my Chrome. And I wish you could see that my screen where it's showing add extension. There we go. And now you can see that this little CC popped up there in the upper right hand corner, which I'm kind of excited to use it. So um, if I click on it, and I know you can't quite see it right now because I'm only sharing this one screen. I think if I shared my whole desktop with you, it would help. There is a chance to change the highlighter color for it. I'm going to do a purple. And then when I click on the button that says start highlighting, um, I'm going to refresh it first because remember, that was one of my issues. should take my own advice. All right. Now my cursor is this giant purple thing that I... Um, had switched it to. Okay. So there you go. I actually wanted to start with this one because then I could have showed you quickly like, okay, in the upper left-hand corner, in the upper right-hand corner, if you go up to your icons. Um, so it is kind of nice actually as, as you're presenting as well. It goes a little slow on my screen. Um, so I might make you dizzy doing that. So I'm going to maybe slow, <laughs> slow it down for you. I'll probably stop highlighting so that. That, like I said, like I don't make you dizzy. All right. Um, simple blocker. This is another one. Um, this one is a little bit touchy is what I would say, because I had to remove it. It caused a couple different issues for me, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to cause something that it will work fine on for you. So I do want to um, have it out there for you. It's a tool that stu helps your, your students stay focused because it can distract, it can block other distracting websites. So if they are hopping on this gamer website constantly instead of doing their work, you can actually set that um, to block certain websites for them. There's lots of tools that do that. This happens just to be an extension, though, that um, I pulled for Google. Um, if you take a look at it, all right, ooh, timeout. 
So go back to that very first app, or extension, sorry. Remember the Move It one? So five minutes has gone by. It's telling me to do it, to do something now. So it's telling me I need to blink one eye while snapping on the opposite hand. Oh, that is actually kind of tough, 15 times in a row. Um, it's a great little mental block, but I was in the middle of something, and so now I'm now I'm distracted. So if I did this um, for a student, if I put this extension on, I like the concept. I'm not 100% sure that it wouldn't drive them crazy, though. Like if, if they needed to focus on getting their task done, and they spent four minutes trying to get the task done, and then all of a sudden this, this move it popped up. Um, and it does take over your whole screen, so you do have to say, okay, done. And now go back to, oh, yeah, what was I doing? So that one is kind of a take it or leave it for me, too. Remember, if I go back up there, I said, I took this one off my computer because it was driving me a little bit nuts. So decide if you're interested in that or not. Um, I do have a video, too, on how to delete our extensions. Um, so when we get to that, if you're not interested in it, um, then you can get rid of it. Okay. And that might be one that, that I get rid of sooner than later. Okay, so going back to um, the last one on this one, the simple blocker, like I said, um, you can turn it on. The bottom here is a little tip though. If you attempt to put a password on it, you gotta remember that. Otherwise, um, some if you forget it, delete the extension and then start over. Okay, even if you shut that off though, it sometimes was remembering things and then it was blocking other things that um, that I didn't want blocked. So take this one with a grain of salt. You have to kind of be careful with, if, we're, if you're gonna use it for certain websites, um, test it out. And if you're getting this blocking screen, um, before you panic with your technology help, um, just know that you can also delete it and that might solve it. So for the interest of time on this one, I'm not gonna add this one because I don't wanna block myself out of other things, okay? I am gonna go on to my next one here. So I'm gonna stop sharing that one and I'm gonna just keep cruising in the folder. So far, the extensions that I'm I'm showing you, there isn't anything that um, is cost costing you anything. So far, everything is free. Um, there might be one or two that do have like a paid version. That I don't think that this one's coming up yet either, though. So so far, you're so so far it's good on the free aspect of it as well. All right, I'm going to switch over now. To the next one, assistive technology with comprehension. So this is the red one. Um, and I had a lot of people enjoy this um, at our school. They, they really enjoyed some of the, the pieces that really helped kids um, dig into just the, a plain old concept of summarizing things or um, having the independence to search out like a a word, like the very first one that we're gonna come to is the Google Dictionary. The one thing um, that I do wanna caution is this is where, if you're using this, you, you still need to know your students. So, um, and I am gonna just skip to the next slide as well and come back to it. Like this, this next one also is a, it's called Summary. I know it's spelt weird, but it is called Summary. Um, if I'm doing this with like a fourth or fifth grade student, I want to still make sure that I'm teaching them how to summarize it first. I don't wanna just give them a tool that's gonna have them do it for them. And maybe that's me being old school, but still be cautious that you want the kid um, to still work on those skills of summarizing. Um, but this is a great tool that if you have struggling learners, that it would help them with the summarizing, especially if that text is really, really long, okay? So I guess my point is don't skip over the, the um, actual skill. All right, let's go back to Google Dictionary. Um, this one isn't like 
a wow factor, but it is what it is. Like if you're assigning some text, um, maybe we've got the Star Tribune or um, CNN, things like that. You can, I'm gonna add this extension really quick. You can have this available for students. I'm gonna make sure that it's added up here. And as they're reading through their text, you can go ahead and click on, um, on the icon itself, the little dictionary. And it's going to read the word for them. It's going to um, pronounce it if they need to. Oops, I'm sorry, I skipped ahead. All right. You've got some options with your um, extensions too. When you when you click on it, it'll ask you if you want to do the audio. It'll ask you if you want to do um, the definition or or the audio of it. I'm sorry that you can't see this part too. I wanna I'm gonna try and reshare it and just make sure that I can do it for you. This one I like for our learners like a fourth or fifth grade type learner that um, might just struggle with the basic concept of, of words and so they have that independence piece that they can hop on this dictionary take a look at it um, it's not the old school dictionary where they're thumbing through and spending a half an hour just finding the word okay all right my next one here is called Summary, and I do like this one a lot um, for numerous, numerous um, grade levels. This one is actually not necessarily an extension, so as you notice, it didn't put me um, over into the Chrome store. It actually just put me here as a bookmark, okay? The only thing that is tricky about this is that the word summary right here, the purple word is actually your link. So sometimes people miss that and they just, because you don't think of purple as a link. Um, and so that is like your, your biggest trick. Just know that right up here on the top is where you can um, click on it to, it's your link. So people forget that sometimes. Down here, I can decide if I put in a piece of text how many sentences I wanted to summarize it into. So it starts off at seven, but maybe I just only want four sentences. That's great. Down at the bottom, I can paste the URL there. Or what I can also do is um, find an article and paste it in here. Um, sometimes when you have a an article coming from a, a bigger place like if I if I open up CNN and I just put that website in sometimes it has a hard time and finding it and even if you go into the specific article it's still kind of tough for it to update sometimes so um, it does help to paste in your your topic or the story, sorry. And that seems to have been working a little bit better for some teachers rather than some of them that I was working with. It worked great. Some of them, they started using it and they knew which one it worked with well. So CNN, for some it worked great. For others, they knew that it was something that um, wasn't there. They knew which articles that they could go to, which sources they could go to. So for today, I'm just gonna type in a story that I just pulled from CNN, I think. I want it summarized into four sentences. When I click on the purple button down here to summarize it, it's thinking for me. And so it pops up three different topics that they've summarized for you. Now, remember when I said, well, this is kind of cool for those struggling teachers. This can be our struggling teachers, sorry, struggling students that um, are really having a hard time with It's with a new kind of summer, oh, but it sorry, is summer. Audio here. Find exceptional offers at the... 
Mm. The infinity <laughs> summer. My CNN is going here. Okay, sorry. Um, so going back to this, I think this would be a very powerful extension for students that struggle with just overwhelming amount of text that sometimes the readability is hard for them. Um, so they, they want to get to the, the concept. And so um, just orally reading it takes away from the comprehension because they're struggling with that piece, the phonetic piece of reading. The one thing, though, that I um, gave to third grade teachers, I did give this to some third grade teachers. Um, and the one thing I told them was, I think this would be kind of a cool way of introducing summarizing. And so I told them what I would do is I would still teach my lesson on summarizing. I would have the piece of text that I wanted them to summarize and I would have them summarize it and then to check and see how accurately they summarized it. Then I would let them put their text and run it through summary and see like, oh, did they pick out what this um, tool suggested would be our biggest one? So I still wanted them to teach the students how to summarize it, but um, they really used it that way and thought it was awesome within their classroom as a whole classroom setting. Um, but I have had teachers all the way up to 12th grade um, or LD teacher was using this as well because it was, it was very helpful for a lot of different reasons. So I liked this one a lot. And like I said, this one wasn't an extension, okay? So test that one out. That would be my, my highlight for you. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to still keep going for another five minutes or so. I know that I need to get you done in about 15 minutes. Um, and we haven't covered, we've only covered one and a half of the four things that I want to. Um, but we'll keep going. And in about maybe five, between five, six, seven-ish minutes, I'll stop and just check for any questions. Um, if you don't have any questions, I can keep going. Otherwise, um, yeah, we'll look for some questions, okay? Or... Um, I would also like any extensions that you have used for certain topics. Um, if you're willing to share those, please put those in the chat as well. All right. What I'm going to try and do maybe now is um, kind of group these together. This TLDR1. Um, Sometimes you, you look at it and you say, okay, it's half of one, six of another, six of one, half a dozen of another. Um, and you'll find that these kind of come together, but there's always just little subtleness differences to this one. Um, this one, there's different levels. You can have it, you can have it summarize a short piece or a medium piece or a longer piece, similar to summary. You know how you could have it four or five or six or seven different sentences. Um, so I, I kind of like that too. It's very similar to the other one. I'm just going to quickly add it onto my extension. Oh, that's right. This one is a little tricky. I'm going to actually go into the app store to search for this one. T D R. Okay. And we want the cute little, I don't know what that is, a monkey or something. I'm going to add that. All right, that's just an advertisement. All right. Let's go back to presenting. Sorry about that. That way I can get it for you. All right, see it again. Sorry about that. All 
All right. For this one, it works very similar to um, your summary. So you've got the extension up here in your upper right-hand corner, T, L, D, R. They kind of smash it together. When you have um, some text open, I don't know if it's going to let me do that. Let me share this. Let me share like Star Tribune really quick. Or, it doesn't even have to be news articles, I guess. It could be anything. No. Let's, do, let's do like a research, so panda bears. We always get students that end up on Wikipedia, so. Let's give them this one. So a giant panda. Um, as you have your text available, you can go up to the extension, and it'll give you a chance to choose what you want. Oh, I'm, I'm clicking too many times. Sorry, going slow. Sorry. When I click on it, it's going to give us the, the chance to um, summarize it for me, and I can choose on. It'll end up on my left side of my screen um, if I want it to be a short summary, a medium-sized summary, or a lengthy summary. And now mine's frozen. Oh, you guys. Okay, well, I really like this one, too. Okay, I know our time is, is precious. Let's keep going then. Darn. Try that one out though. You may like that one as well. Okay, let's go back to presenting. And as I am getting that back to presenting mode, um, quick question, has anyone had any trouble um, accessing the link that I have on there? Let us know. Okay, now we're back, sorry about that. All right, um, this one too, gosh, I only have like a minute left. Well, I guess I have 10 minutes left, but I wanna give you some time to talk. Um, this one, you can see I, I wrote with an exclamation mark. I really like this one because you can take the text, um, as you see like the screen here is, is split and it just kind of divvies it out for you and spreads it up into like a shorter bulleted list. Um, and I really like that for, for students, all students, um, not just a struggling student. I think that is really powerful to um, show them the difference. Like they can model through that first text, but really showing them if when, after it's cleaned up, how much easier it seems to flow for them. Okay. Let me just click on my last one is here as well. Oh, highlighting. Every kid loves to highlight, right? Um, this tool I really, really liked because it doesn't let them be the highlighter people and coloring everything because you know that a student will color the whole page yellow for you. Um, it actually chooses what to highlight for you. So it's kind of like going back to that, that very first one of summary. It, um, it's picking out the concepts that are important. And so you again could use this extension um, the same way that I described summary, like you could give students a physical piece of text, piece of paper, text, 
have them highlight what they think are the most important um, main ideas, author's purpose, things like that. And when it highlights some essential portions, you could do this digitally and match it up to what they've done on paper and see, are they picking out the right things or did they just color it completely yellow? Okay, so I do like this one as well. All right, let's go back. Any questions right now? I know we still have like two more um, topics to cover with not a whole lot of time. So let me just stop for a minute and see if we have questions. All right. Seeing no questions, do you want me to squeak through like another few more minutes and see if I can get to the next folder or so? On purpose, I didn't do a ton of... Perfect, sure. <laughs> right. um, I didn't put like a ton to overwhelm you. I, I tried to keep it, um, keep it just small and simple. So hopefully it's not overwhelming, but um, can be used within your classroom or um, special ed setting as well. Could be just a one-on-one -on -one setting. Um, hopefully it's hopefully it's what you're looking for. All right, so I'm gonna go over to my next screen to share with you then. All right, sharing a window. I'm gonna bump over to the, I wanna say it's a bluish one, text to speech one. Here we go. All right, Enuncify is our first one here. Um, this one and my next one below it, read aloud, these two do your same, do similar topics where they actually read the text for a student. Um, I have had a lot of LD teachers that have really enjoyed that because it um, they were just worried with the fluency rate that kids were struggling with the comprehension piece, which kind of does sometimes go in hand in hand for some kids. Um, so they really like this, that they could put the text in and have kids um, have this read to them. What I like about this one is that, I'm, I wrote it right here. Oh, I usually put a little asterisk there. I wrote that it blurs out the other text for the kids. So as it's reading, it's just really only focusing on the text piece itself, okay? Um, if you look down to the next one, the space bar will stop the audio. So you, you won't see like a start and stop button like we usually do, like the good old fashioned square and the pause button. Um, so it's the space bar that stops it. The only drawback is that it just reads and reads and reads the whole page. You can't just select a, a small portion, okay? This one, the next one, you can do the whole page or you can just select the text, okay? So that's the big difference between these two. But then this one doesn't blur out. This one also is kind of interesting. When you add this extension, um, I'll say it's interesting. It may drive you nuts, but I liked it. Um, there is a little gear in this one. When you are going to your extension, I'm just going to tell you about it right now, and hopefully I can show it to you. But if, if not, I want to tell you that there's a little square that makes it look like you're stopping it, and you're not stopping it. When you click on it, it gets you into settings. And in that settings, you can actually change the person's um, speed, their rate of how they're reading. You can actually change um, the voice. So you can have Alice and you can have Alex and you can have as all these different voices. That might be fun, but you can quickly see that a student may spend a lot of time choosing their voices and then they may switch the language on you. And um, so take that with a grain of salt. I do like that there is options on this one, 
but um, students can probably get a little distracted on that one as well. So I'm gonna add it. I don't know if I'll get to actually demonstrate it here. Two minutes left, maybe I won't. I'll add it, but I don't think I'll get to demonstrate it here. Let's see if it appears. There we go. I'm just going to see if it'll pull up my my panda research again or or if it'll freeze on me. It's going kind of slow. Yeah, it's going slow. Maybe I should record that if, if you guys need. I know John is recording this, but I can also do like a screencast of this too if you want to actually see. Um, see how, how to use the tool. Like I said, a lot of them are self-explanatory, but I just have a little bit of those side tips to it. Okay, let me just cruise on. Sorry that I can't demonstrate that last one. Um, speech to text. You could have this as an extension, but if you have like a Google Doc open, it's also under um, tools. So you can see right here, if you have Google products, just go under the tab tools. Um, so right now I actually have a Google slide up tools and the voice type speaker notes is right here. And I've had um, actually EBD teachers have really liked this one. Um, believe it or not, they have some customers that just really didn't want to type their report. And so it really did help um, some of our students be able to um, audio so they can speak and then it's typing for them. And that was a really um, helpful one for, like I said, our EBD teacher. This last one, I'll, I'll stop, I promise I won't get to that last folder, but I'll stop after this one, is read and write. This is one that, if you know it on the bottom, there is a paid version of this. Um, educators can get it paid for, like a, a free version, um, but I will say that I got tons of emails and junk mail after this. So kind of a caveat of this though, um, I really did like this one though because you can, you can change a lot just by using this one tool. So if I pulled up um, Star Tribune, I had an article, I can change the background of that article from just plain black and white to like blue with yellow. Um, I know I had a speech teacher that used that quite a bit for a student's Tourette's, the color um, really instigated or set off his Tourette's and so she always looked to put blue backgrounds for him. Um, so that was something that you could do right away with this one. And then you can enlarge the, the text easily. Um, we've had visual impairments students that use that perfectly because it's just a nice quick thing. And all these tools are at the top of this read and write extension. So it is kind of like I wrote the Swiss Army knife of everything because it's all like a one-stop shop there. Um, I really like this one if, you, if you're interested in it for just those visual cues up on top. It's a really good one. All right, I think I will stop there. I know I didn't get to squeak out things. If you're using, oh, I didn't get to use the reading one. Oh, come on, I'm so sorry. Um, if you're going through this and um, you can't figure out, like, what do I do with this? Shoot me an email. Um, I can give you a quick screencast of it or we can visit and I can do like a, a private session Google Meet session with you and just sharing with you how to um, how to use that tool quickly, um, feel free to email me, okay, or today. Um, but I will stop right now because that's the end of our session. Um, sorry that you didn't get to see everything, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, um, feel free to, I'll stick around in the chat for a few more minutes and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks everyone.